can I pronounce this? I'm going to sound like an idiot trying to pronounce this. I apologize. It's 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 a spelling that's unfamiliar with me. Uh, Eiasis. I think I'm Eiasis. Yeah, Eiasis. That's the hurricane. And as as is wont to happen when one of these hurricanes forms, um, local and weather people lose their night minds, and they're like, "Oh my God, it's a hurricane! Night, they're gonna die! Look, here's this cone." Somebody standing out in the hurricane to tell you not to go outside. Yeah. Um. Isaias, Isaias, Isaias. Okay. Isaias. It's I, what the part of the entertainment of this has been watching every single uh, newscaster locally try and pronounce the name of the. Yeah. Ooh, la, la. And like they're run, it's part of it is because they do them, they name them alphabetically. Yeah. But we have so many night hurricanes now that like they've run out of all the names everybody knows, which I guess are the white people names now that I've said that out loud. And that's terrible. If a hurricane strikes, the name gets taken out of rotation. Yeah. So that's why all the I names have yeah. started. Yeah. They can never use that name again. And there's not a lot of names that start with I. Yeah. So. People are going to now send us 47 names that start with I. Now, I will point out, due to the fact that we're in the pandemic, that the, uh, the, the, the people are quite so stressed about the hurricane because there's other stuff to be stressed about. However, they may, they were, it started off with there's a tropical storm and then might go up this way. And then, oh, God, it's coming this way. And there's the cone of uncertainty. And they're like, oh, prepare yourself. It's getting boo-la-la. hurricane winds and night. And it was supposed to, to be happening right now, in fact, as we're recording this. Yeah, like I hit you up yesterday and I'm like, yeah. are you going to have electricity tomorrow? It, it was, they, were, they were all like, they're supposed to be like hurricane winds. You're getting like five inches of rain and you're all going to sink into the ocean and die. Oh, and the dog will blow into space. You don't know. Loki would be so sad. And right now. <laughs> no wind. No rain. No, nothing. And I, 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 I mention this every time it happens. We get so prepared, so worked up. Yesterday, I was out on my porch patching up some last minute holes just to keep leaks out. Yeah. Which really nice. Just, just as easily come towards you as not. Right. It was exhausting. And we've had like 102 heat index. So it's just and it's muggy and it's humid as all hell. So it's sort of like swimming and frying at the same I time. Really, it's amazing. I really don't miss humidity. Like, I'm a big fan of how Colorado has, like, no humidity. It's great. If it stays on current track, that hurricane's going to hit most of my family in New York. Except it's going to be scraping up against the coast, so it's going to be nothing by the time well, it gets there. And it's going to, like, pick up. The current projection is it's going to pick up power and be a total mother. Oh, la, la. The they said get... my house would be in Oz by now, okay? Oh, right. I... like, that's three days from now, so who knows? So... Yeah, it, it's it, and, and I, it's it's this weird phenomenon. I've talked about it before. It's this weird phenomenon when this stuff happens. Ah, 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 you, you, you're, you're not scared. That we make all these predi pr pre uh, all these preparations for the hurricane, and then it comes and it doesn't happen, and you feel disappointed, which is weird. You're like, oh, but man, I was I was ready. I got all my night together. There's Especially no this year. You're like, you know what? Take me to Oz. Night. I'll go. I'm packed. I'll join the Lollipop Guild. Night. Hello, Grady. I don't know if this is happening on the stream, but at least on my Skype call with you, you picking up Grady made the whole picture blurry. Because <laughs> I think you have it on like portrait mode. It made the whole thing blurry. Yeah, because normally your background is blurry. Uh huh. But now that there's two faces in the frame, the whole thing is blurry. <laughs> it doesn't know what to do with two people. Oh no! It doesn't know what to do. Kitty. Oh, oh, oh my gosh! You work so hard, Grady. I know. It's hard work keeping that dog in line, and now there's a hamster. Gosh. What is what is hard work about pooping and eating? It's hard work. Look at him. He's exhausted. Anyway, so that's that's the update of where things are right now. Silly little. All right, go on. Go do things. Ah. I gotta, gotta go run this house. 
with that having been said, let's let's get the nonsense underway. Where's my intro? Give me that intro. I don't have it. Well, I wasn't asking you. I was, you know, it was just in general. Each week, Catherine. Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff. Bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? Um, Where to begin this week? Oh, yeah, well, a quick follow up to last week. Uh, this is uh, last week we talked about the uh, the dude who went into the church, stole a Batman costume from the youth minister. And robbed the place. And drank their Coke. Which might have been a collectible Coke, which is probably um, nasty, but... Was it a refreshing Coke? Well, guess oh, what happened? Fans are going to get that one. Guess what happened to Batman? <laughs> He's been arrested! Do you know why? If you are watching last week, you probably might guess. He put on the costume and the mask... After he broke into the after, which meant the cameras had his face just straight up there. This is one of those cases that when the public attorney, that when the public defender gets, it's just like, just fucking plead out so I can go home. Yeah. Now, I, if he called the Joker beforehand, you would have known that you have to jump in the vat of acid before you start doing crime. Right. Uh, all right. Um, let's start off in uh, Rhode Island because we've just dealt with taxes, or at least some of us have. I just dealt with taxes. Well, you're going like, wait, Octo I, I haven't. I don't just know what that has to do with Rhode Island. You'll see. Um, oh. I was like, do we send our taxes to Rhode Island? Because I've been sending them to DC this whole time. Some people are fortunate enough. Wonderful people. People who don't work self-employment don't even get me started on the fact that there is a self-employment tax in the united states which is complete bullshit it is way too expensive too um some people they get money back from the government because it's taken out of their paycheck and at the end what what the government doesn't use they get back to you and you get a check sometimes if you don't use direct deposit um well a bunch of people in rhode island did in fact get their checks from Mickey fucking Mouse. What? Rhode Island issues tax refunds signed by Walt Disney and Mickey Mouse. Rhode Island mistakenly sent more than 175 tax refund checks signed by Walt Disney and Mickey Mouse rather than the state treasurer and controller. Rhode Island Division of Taxation uses the signatures on test files which were mistakenly printed on the real checks and sent out on Monday. Uh, no other signature lines were printed beside the two. Um, and I love the, the, the very comprehensive uh, news site here. Mickey Mouse is the cartoon character that was animator and producer Walt Disney's first big hit. Like a little Wikipedia. How did that count? The well, checks. Told you the story had to be 300 words. This is 250. <laughs> the checks were tax refunds for corporate sales and tax credits, mostly to businesses. The tax division has voided the checks and will issue new checks. I, you know, honestly, does anybody even give a shit about signatures on checks anymore? I can't tell you the last time I've written a check. I don't think I currently have any checks with my name on them. I write checks to my lawn guy because he doesn't do like PayPal and stuff. So I write checks to him. But, and I do get checks sometimes for, for like, you know, like my, t I, like there was a, uh, a while back because of the giant scandal. They attempted to, just short form in case you folks didn't know, um, they attempted to build a nuclear reactor here in South Carolina. Um, and they dumped like billions of dollars into it. Oh, I thought you were going to say billions of gallons of well, nuclear like, waste. No, they dumped billions of dollars into building this nuclear reactor. And they never actually were able to accomplish even building the outside dome. Wow. And it became a huge scandal. The local utility went under. 
We were bought out by a company called Dominion Energy, which isn't like, you know, insidious sounding at all. And as part of that, there was a settlement. They sent us checks. So, you know, and I, I got a check for this because they, they, they raised our rates to pay ostensibly pay for this fucking nuclear reactor. They didn't do. And I got a check for that. And I was like, what do I do with this? I, I take a picture of it with my phone and that's it. Who the fuck even cares about this? Does anyone out there actually go around on checks and go, wait a minute, this signature does not matter. You buy signature stamps for like 20 bucks. Who, who even pays attention to signatures anymore? You should have just cashed the Mickey Mouse check. I mean, honestly, <clears throat> you're you're more likely that Mickey Mouse can back that check than <laughs> for being honest. Mickey Mouse got fucking bank. What is Double? this? Uh -huh. I didn't sign that. <laughs> this is fraud, huh? F R A. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway. <laughs> no, it's just it's. <laughs> I would just cash the fucker, you know. Can you even imagine getting your refund check in the mail and looking at it and being like, "I can't." Is this a fucking joke? That's if people Especially, even, you know, when you're probably out of work and you need that fucking money. Well, that's if people even read the signatures. I mean. Can you out of how many people's signatures can you actually read? No I've mind. gotten I've gotten autographs from people at, at conventions and stuff. I've gotten checks that have signatures on them. I can't read that shit. I have a my, signature. My signature was my mother's great shame. Cuz my mother had like that perfect out of a textbook penmanship. Yeah. That you only get when nuns are rapping on your knuckles all day. My handwriting fucking sucks. Yeah, I can... Every time I would sign something in front of my mother, she would say, that's not the name that I gave you. I don't know what that says. <laughs> so who even reads those? I don't know. But yeah, anyway, yeah, so you get Mickey Mouse. The bank's not going to cash it. The bank reads them. Which, I don't know how, but... Uh, all right, so... This is a thing that's been going around. I don't know. It's it's kind of it's not an urban legend, but it kind of has one of those urban legend feels to it. People have been getting unsolicited bags of seeds yeah. in the mail. They seem to be coming from China. And nobody knows what the hell they are. Now, so the I, September wedge in our quarter quell is Audrey too. See, if I got a bag of seeds, especially if the seeds were labeled earrings or something like that, I would be like, I don't know what this is. I'm concerned about it. At best, I'm just going to throw, you know, at worst, I'm just going to throw it away. Yeah. But then we go to Boonesville, Arkansas. Somebody planted them, didn't they? Oh, boy, howdy, did they? <laughs> Boonesville man plants mysterious seeds from China. U.S. Department of Agriculture is warning people to watch out for unsolicited packages of seeds shipped from China. Experts are concerned the seeds could be an invasive species and are warning people not to plant them. A man in Boonville planted the seeds and they've been growing in his garden for two months. The Arkansas Department of Agriculture is unsure what kind of plant it is and plans to remove them. Doyle Crenshaw, that's a name. That's the name of a guy who plants fucking unsolicited China seeds. Quote, we brought them down here and planted the seeds just to see what would happen. And every two weeks I come by and put miracle Grow on it. And they just started growing like crazy. Do you drip a little bit of your blood on it? <laughs> see more? <laughs> Because you've doomed us all. Uh, quote, the this package. This is how we got the ball sack tree that I have to deal with in my fucking yard. The package said it was from China and said studded earrings on the outside. We thought that was a little odd. So you planted the damn thing? Yeah. Plant has a large white fruit and orange flowers, much resembling a squash plant. plant. 
Um, uh, all right. I, my mother, bless her fucking heart. I love my mom, but she <laughs> saw this tree and thought it looked pretty. It's called a popcorn tree is one of the names given to it. And she wanted my dad to plant one in the front yard for her. And he did. And it's still there. Unbeknownst to my mom, the popcorn tree is an invasive species. Have you heard of kudzu? Yes. Okay, imagine that, but it's a tree. All throughout my neighborhood now. In my neighbor's yard, way back in the back, in that day, all across my neighborhood now, there are these fucking popcorn trees. Like your mom has left a legacy. And here you could and people have tried cutting them down. Guess what? They grow back from the stump. Cause they grow from the root. They it's just they spread out underground. They are the devil. <laughs> and that's the same thing with the don't just fucking what are you doing don't just plant shit you don't know what it is that you didn't even ask for that someone just sent you we're he's fucking lucky he didn't we were lucky he didn't fucking eat them yeah well, motherfucker would have turned to swamp thing or some shit i mean it says they haven't removed them so he might still anybody ever see creep show the bad death of Jordy Verrill. Anybody watch that? Oh, you should you should get Dan to show you Creep Show sometime. It's it Stephen King plays the lead role. He wrote the story and he plays the role of Jordy Verrill. It sounds Stephen King-ish. It's so goofy. It's so messed up. You'd love it. Um you will laugh your butt off through it. Um I think I saw parts of that movie because I remember Ted Danson being buried on a beach up to his neck with the tide coming in. It, that is that movie. Different part, but it is that movie. Yes. But yeah, just don't. What the fuck are you doing? Just planning this. <sighs> Next up. Those um, could be from space. You don't know. You don't know. Next up, um, there is a celebration that's held uh, in the Caribbean and elsewhere. It's called Emancipation Day. And it's when um, slaves and other indentured servants, uh, black slaves particularly, in the Caribbean, in the island nations, were freed. And it's kind of a big deal. It's kind of like Juneteenth in the United States. It's, it's, and it's, it's celebrated here, too, because we have a lot of, of uh, immigrants. And um, it goes back a few years. Um, I'm setting up that now because you're we have yet again in our continuing series of maybe check run your advertisements by somebody first oh my god is this thing real i thought this was fake nope oh no kfc in trinidad did this i saw this on twitter i was sure it was fake because come on Happy Emancipation Day. I'm just going to let you all soak in it for a minute. People in, 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 in less savage nations are like, well, I don't understand. What, what's, the, what's the problem? I, I don't understand. Um, whereas us here in America, this, yeah. this is a little bit of a problem. For us, the fried chicken thing. Uh, yeah, apparently, yes. Spafty says the black people's old fried chicken stereotype doesn't really exist outside the U.S. Yeah. Except here. They it, have a slice of watermelon they could Photoshop into the frame. I don't know. Um, KFC has apologized for ads posted on social media on Emancipation Day, which drew negative responses. In a brief statement posted to its Facebook page later that day, the fast food restaurant acknowledged it may have gotten it wrong and apologized for any offense caused. Um, at KFC Trinidad, we always strive to recognize our nation's multicultural history and makeup. Our intention was to support, recognize the importance of this historically significant event. We recognize our post comm comm commemorating Emancipation Day drew some negative responses. Clearly, 
We got it wrong. Whoops. I really think this is fake because, like, I saw this on Twitter and I'm like, come on. No company would be that stupid. That's obviously fake. Now, what's what's even more frustrating is is people who are like, what? They didn't mean it that way. You guys making a big deal about it. It's, it's no big deal. Y'all are, are, you're the real racist for pointing it out. There's a lot of that, which is just so stupid. Frustrating. No, it's not racist until you pointed it out. It was racist. Now it's, you're the real racists. You are, not me. I mean, not KFC, not, shut up. You're the real. I just, <laughs> white people, and yeah. I am a white people. Yeah, I so am I too. Can say this. Yeah. White people, we need to shut the fuck up more. Yep. And I know that the whole concept of this show is you and me talking for 30 to 40 minutes at a time. Yeah. But on certain topics. Yep. White people just need to shut the fuck up. Yep. Except where we can be helpful. Because there's ways that we can be helpful. But if it's not one of those ways, we should just shut the fuck up. This is this. Run it by someone first. Yeah. Now, admittedly, this was KFC Trinidad, and they don't have that stupid ass stereotype there, allegedly. The idea, you know, I guess it would be kind of frustrating to have to run shit by people in America because we are the worst. Yeah. I feel like if you're going to put it on the internet, you at least have to do like a cursory check of, you know. Yeah. Like there was a big kerfuffle. On, on like Irish Twitter this week because the BBC referred to an Irish actor as English or British because there's certain institutions in Britain that still just think Ireland belongs to them. Yeah, especially Northern Ireland. Right. I mean, Northern Ireland does, but they think all of kind Ireland of. Still does. I mean, well, so it... like they referred to this Irish actor as British, and people kind of lost their shit because they were like, no. He's fucking not. Uh, like, you, you know, if it's going to be on the internet, you got to think about it a little. That takes, that, that takes work, Also, though. it's just a poorly designed ad. That's work, though. It looks stupid. It does. Uh, next up, we okay, so, the previous week we had the dude stealing from the Paycheck Protection Program loans to go to Vegas. And then last week, we had someone stealing from the Paycheck Protection loan to buy a Lamborghini. And we told that guy to leave the country, and YouTube informed us that we were stupid to say that because Americans aren't allowed in any other countries right now. And point. I just want the person to know it was a fucking joke. Right, yes. What he really should have done is not stolen the money. Yes. It's just... it's. Do you not understand that that or how oh, bless I your heart? People watch this show if they don't understand humor. I don't know. Well, I will say that the, the, the fellow in our next story, he did not, he, 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 he was a better man. He did not steal from the Paytech Protection Program. He just stole from, in general. Um, we will hitch command. I said it. Wow, I practiced before before the show tonight because I didn't want to fuck it up. We will hitch command buys Porsche in Destin with check printed from home computer. So kudos for not stealing from you know a government program. Technically, this was stealing from the bank though. Casey William Kelly forty two. Arrested Wednesday for grand theft of a motor vehicle and uttering a, a false banknote. Also attempted to purchase Rolex watches with a bad check. Um, during the investigation, it was determined Kelly had purchased a Porsche 911 Turbo from a Porsche dealership using a fraudulent check written for $139,203.05. $139 Porsche was reported stolen. The next day, Kelly presented a check in the amount of $61,000, 521 cents to a jeweler in Miramar Beach. 
an attempt to purchase three Rolex watches. However, the jeweler kept the watches till it could be determined if the check would cash. Thursday has reported that the check was fake. So the jeweler was smarter than the Porsche dealership. Yeah, uh, Kelly told investigators he printed out the cashier's checks from his home computer and did not get them from his bank. So I guess the Mickey Mouse signature actually would have been fine. Yeah, guess so. Now look, for those of you who haven't um, seen that movie with Leonardo DiCaprio, what, what, what the fuck was that called? Catch Me If You Can. If you haven't seen that movie, let me just explain to you. If you look at the bottom of a check, if you even know what a check is, bless your millennial hearts. No, I shouldn't play millennials. Millennials, no, it's Zoomers. Bless your Zoomer heart. Um... Look at a check. At the bottom of it, there is a bunch of numbers. Yeah. One set of those numbers is your account. That's your account number. The other set of those numbers is a routing number. And that's a way of telling where money goes to and how it should be transferred. It actually means shit. So if you, he, if you just put a bunch of stupid numbers on there and give the check to somebody, they're going to cash it. Now, Back in the olden times, when, you know, we had wire transfer by actual wire, um, this took a little bit, and you could actually outrun the consequences rather easily. Now, as I said earlier in the show, I can take a picture of the check with my phone and deposit it that way. They're going to find out pretty quick that the numbers don't mean shit. Yeah. I, is, I don't understand why the Porsche dealership just trusted him. Like That was dumb. I bought my current car outright with <clears throat> a life insurance payment after my mother passed away. And like I, I, I found out the hard way that the bank will only write you cashier's checks in certain amounts at certain times. Yep. And so I had to still pay it in three installments. Shit, if you go like, I think was it, if you go over 50,000... Um, that the Department of Homeland Security is notified. Yeah. Well, they wouldn't even write, they wouldn't, maybe just because I had shitty credit. I don't know, but they wouldn't uh. even do over like 8,000. So I bought like a $15,000 car. Mm. And like, they, they wouldn't give me my car until that last check cleared. Mm-hmm. So I don't know who the fuck is getting fired at the Porsche dealership. <laughs> Somebody ain't working tomorrow. I bought a Honda Fit. <laughs> and, and they, they were like, like, no, you may not have your roller skate until we have our money for your roller skate. So a fucking Porsche 911, they're just like, wait, you're good for it. Like, no. I mean, it, somebody it, getting fired. Like, you could, there, there was you an... Your job. You about to lose your job. There was a whole you you could kind of get away with this in like the fifties, the sixties, the seventies. But then the internet happened. Yeah. That's I you know he watched the movie is what happened. Where did he get blank cashier's checks anyway? He he probably did them in Photoshop. Um. Except we're going to Australia. Um they are not doing as badly as us. With no. the whole pandemic thing, but they're they're still suffering. The, rest but, of the world took it seriously. But the however, rest of the world just did what they were told, and now they're doing better. And we were like, "But freedom!" And now we're fucked. Well, let's let's not immediately say we're the dumbest people because sometimes they're really doing kind of they're doing better. Here's what they're doing with their breathing space. Man charged after allegedly breaking into Sydney Zoo. Swimming in an aquarium while friends filmed him. Man has been charged with breaking into a zoo and swimming in the aquarium while his friends filmed. A 30-year-old allegedly entered Sydney Zoo in Eastern Creek, ignoring warning signs. He's accused of diving into the water at the aquarium and swimming in the water as his friends recorded him. Footage shows a man in his underwear was uploaded to social media. Peakhurst man was issued a court attendance notice for behaving in an offensive manner. Entering and closed non agricultural lands, some very specific law, and interfering with business and opening, entering, or damaging an animal enclosure. Very specific laws. You have to wonder why Australia. Yeah. 
Did this happen a lot? Are people laws that specific don't just spring from the head of Zeus full grown. Are people entering <laughs> animal enclosures a lot in Australia? Like the, the TV ads say, don't say don't iron on your person. Just yeah. cause. It's because some fucking asshole did that. Why do people keep doing this? Just leave them alone. Here in America, we have them in the fucking Bass Pro. This dude goes to the zoo. Like when we went to the zoo this week, was there only a three foot fence separating me from the pool that the hippo was swimming in? Yes. Did I have a weird urge to jump that fence and try to pet the hippo? Yes. Did I not do that because I'm not a fucking moron? I did not do that. It just, it doesn't even mention what- I want to be on the show, not on the show. It doesn't mention what enclosure he dumped, jumped into too, which is kind of, yeah. what the fuck it's animals like, were you fucking with? There, there is just one big finned fish thing. Yeah. Trying to like catch. Also, if you knew you were going to do this, why didn't you bring a swimsuit? Why are you in there in your underwear? Yeah, right? It was just like a spontaneous thing. Like, hey, hey, yo, I've got a great idea. Which, you know, friends who who say they have a great idea and that's when you immediately should be fa be worried and you know to be worried. Hi, Mike. Um, but you, you don't. I got an idea. What? No, film me. No, watch. No, what are you doing? No, just film oh, me. In Australia, those might be the safest animals in Australia. Mm. You might be safer in the tank of the aquarium. <laughs> Fair enough. At least he's not nude. That, I mean, I guess. I guess, yeah. That's kind of a experience there's a lot okay. of dudes that don't know that you're supposed to change your underwear every day <laughs> and i don't think the fish would appreciate that fellas is changing your underwear gay <laughs> dude there's there's a whole subsection of the internet of dudes that won't yeah that literally wipe their own ass because yeah. they're uh, oh, women are bitches because we won't sleep with them and i'm like no we're not bitches just your ass is literally caked with shit oh uh, we got one more this week we're, we're cruising on back to florida and quite literally cruising picture it you're going down i-95 which is one of the busiest interstates in the united states of america and uh you're in florida god help you and you look over and uh, I'll send you the shark bait. Hoo -ha -ha. <laughs> we got we got video for this one. You look over, and um, this is happening on the highway. Take a close look. Wait for it. Look at that! Holy shit! Florida saw more bizarre traffic behavior Saturday. When a man jumped onto a moving semi truck. Just after 1 p.m., Florida Highway Patrol got a call that a man was driving a, a, a Toyota SUV south, another man on the, uh, with another man. Uh, the driver, whom troopers did not identify, began acting strangely, stopped the car in the southbound exit ramp. He got out of the car and started walking the highway. As he walked, he jumped over a concrete medium wall and onto oncoming northbound traffic into as cars started to slow he jumped on top of the hood of a semi tractor trailer that continued driving north with the man on top the man started hitting the windshield of the truck with his hands florida highway what? patrol trooper eventually stopped the truck and detained the man florida highway patrol does save the man the driver will be truck okay and i'm gonna play it again in the back, just so we have this on the background, because what the fuck? They they don't know why. People in the channel are saying, "Stop the truck," which is it's not that easy. Oh Those semi trucks. Here, let me tell you something I know from okay. my brother in law who okay. drives trucks, and my cousin who used to drive trucks. Those semi trucks, they can't just stop. They need like a couple of football fields worth of space to stop. 
Well, true, but he, this dude is but just- If you're in a tiny ass car and you cut one of them off, they're trained to hit you in the way least likely to kill you because they can't just stop. It takes about half a mile to stop. Yeah, but this guy kept driving. He's still driving. Look at this. He's not stopping. Am I, I mean, if there's not room to pull over. In fact, he, if you watch closely, he's actively trying to shake the guy off his truck and into traffic. Now, look. This is some, like, Dukes of Hazard bullshit. I have like, had, there's, a, there's a blood feud here. I have had. I that or that dude's a Terminator. I have had people fuck with my vehicle before. I have. We all, we've been, been, been in trouble, whether it's an accident or just dealing with other drivers. You get a little cranky. Yeah. I have never gone, that fucker's dead, and tried to end their life. So, number one. I mean, that, could, that guy could be a Terminator. <laughs> It's fucking 2020, man. He could be a killer robot from the future. <laughs> Look, yeah, easily could have stopped the car or the truck, even if it took him a while, stopped yeah. the truck, called the police, stayed inside the truck while Looney Tunes has happy days there. And I'm yeah. not, that's not Look discounting. Like, slow down. And, and that's not discounting the fact that you take it upon yourself to jump onto a fucking tractor trailer. What I want to know is why. None like, of this what, makes the backstory here. Everybody here, fucking idiots. Just it's it's Florida all the way down. Yeah, Florida is like a whole other planet. There is there is nothing more Florida than than th this is this is everybody in this was Florida. I mean, maybe if there was a gator involved, Flo the, the guy who jumped on the truck was Florida. The guy who kept driving, driving the truck and tried to shake the dude off was Florida. The dude filming what was effectively an attempted homicide and driving along with the truck not helping the situation no, was also, also I'm Florida. Getting this. I'm getting this. This is going on Instagram. Everyone was Florida. I would 100% put that on like Twitter if I saw something like that. This was like, this is like that gif of Spider-Man pointing at Spider-Man. That's what the, <laughs> this whole fucking thing. Just see Florida's yep. pointing their handles at each other. Yep. This week's title should be GTA Hole. If I could, if I could try to get that past YouTube, I might even try it. But it's all the way down. Oh, Smafty's like it's all Florida. Always has been. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Sorry, I'm fidgeting with my hair a lot because I need a haircut and it's a mess. It's, it's everybody involved. So I, I think the first thing we've learned this week is de-escalation. Is yeah. the word of the day. Can also, semi trucks are not for surfing. Can you say that? Can you say de escalation? Do you could. Uh, yeah, trucks are not for surfing, but just sometimes you need to be the one to not jump on this. You need to be the one to not to try to jump to shake the guy off. This, you need to be the person who's not filming the whole shit. Okay. Just you think that truck has the how's my driving with the 800 number on the back? <laughs> Because I'd be calling, be like, well, he's clearly trying to murder somebody. <laughs> I think he needs some time off. Um, we've learned the fish do not want to swim with you. They they, they just want to do their own shit. They, and, and quite literally, they just want to do their own shit. You're swimming in fish shit, dude. Yeah. Yeah. What the hell are you doing? Um... I mean, you're swimming in fish shit if you swim in the ocean, too. So we've learned the numbers on checks mean things. And also but some signatures don't. <laughs> and also we've learned some people uh, have just discovered what checks are. So that's that's very exciting for them. Um, we've learned always run your ad campaign by somebody else. Don't just be like, oh, this is fine. It's. 
I mean, I guess the only thing that would have been worse is if they, like, if they had the colonel doing the, the black power fist, that would have been pretty fucking terrible. <sighs> We've so learned. We just didn't do that. We learned that if you get sent mysterious seeds in the fucking mail, burn them. Seymour. Jesus Christ. Ain't y'all see no movies? Jesus. And and finally this week we've learned that, you know, it can act tax checks can actually go out the door signed by fucking Mickey Mouse and nobody will blink an eye. Probably because Mickey's signature is horrible. Who you know signed Mickey, this? I don't know. You know what Mickey's signature looks like, or are you just assuming? Because he's just, a mouse, he can't write in cursive. <laughs> You bigot. 